Welcome to the Beer Life Sports Expert Show. That's right. We've got a show now. I'm Callie Bundy with Beer Life Sports, joined by Razor Rosenthal. What's up, Razor? Callie, I'm doing well. How are you today? I, I am well. And we are here today. We're going to break down all the action from this past week, aren't we, Razor? We are. And I even am I'm wearing a Green Bay colored pullover because I'm sympathetic to all the gamblers out there, including myself that took a heartbreaking defeat at Lambeau Field last weekend. Essentially your color of mourning this week. It is, this is my black, is. green is the new black here. Luckily for me, I went with Brady. And speaking of, first up, let's talk about the Bucks versus Green Bay. There weren't a lot of happy betters on this one. Razor, what do you think happened here? Why don't we start with the first half? Where can I begin in the first half? It still is blowing my mind, Callie. Let's start with first down conversions for Tomas Brady. This man has crushed my heart <laughs> way too many times betting against him, but no bigger than last Sunday. He converts six out of seven first downs in the first half, none bigger than a third and 15 when he had guys in his face, but yet Green Bay loses Chris Godwin in the middle of the field and game, set, match. That was the position that they were in in the first half. Get to the third down and convert, and Green Bay was in big trouble. How about the inept running game? Aaron Jones, a complete no-show, gets hurt off, off of the fumble in the third quarter, but he could not move or matriculate the ball down the field first half. When Aaron Jones is not going, Green Bay is not going to go. And how about Devontae Adams? He catches that ball in the end zone 99 out of 100 times. But, of course, not on Sunday. I catch that pass 72 times out of 100. You catch it 98 out of 100. <laughs> but we settle for a field goal. And then, listen, Aaron Rodgers really never could get out of the pocket. So much pressure by the, de the, the defense of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that this guy would stand there for three seconds, never move, and we saw way too many sacks. And then the heartbreaking situation at the end of the half. I have never seen this before in a huge game. Single high coverage, beat by one guy, 10 seconds left on the clock, no deep safeties. Let's let him go right down the field. Tom Brady, beautiful clock management, by the way, by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, fourth and three, converting that. Boom. Touchdown 21-10. You would think it's over, but it wasn't. But those those are the key errors in the first half that just absolutely crushed me. So what do you think was the largest disappointment for Green Bay fans and betters? Well, I think, you know, it's really disappointing when you lose a game and you're still alive. And that's what happened in that Green Bay-Tampa Bay game. They cut the lead to five. Tom Brady gets down to the other side of the field. Then you're thinking, okay, we're done. Nope, he throws interception number one. What do we do? We do nothing as a Green Bay better and a Green Bay fan. We convert zero first downs on the first interception. Okay, no problem. Let's punt away. Guess what? We get a second Christmas present 11 months before Christmas in January. What do we do? Nothing. Zero first downs. And for me, that was the telling end of the game. I'm sure we'll go into the field goal versus touchdown scenario by Matt LaFour. But listen, you don't convert on one first down off of two gifts from the greatest quarterback of all time. We're in big trouble. Big trouble. And you were. And speaking of, yes, was LaFleur's decision to kick a field goal the worst playoff coaching move in recent years, in your opinion? Possibly. We can go back to the Super Bowl where Seattle – did not hand the ball off to Cal's March Sean Lynch, instead throwing the ball. And we all know what happens when Butler catches the interception. This to me is mind boggling, but here's the thing. Let's analyze this for a second. If we're not playing against an incredible quarterback like Tom Brady, perhaps I kick the field goal. We get the ball back after that average quarterback maybe doesn't convert a third down. Okay. Maybe but you're playing against Tom Brady. You know there is probably a 95% chance or higher that he is going to figure out a way to get 10 yards to seal the deal and win this game. So I feel for a lot of betters in this situation. You have to remember there are several ways to bet a game. There are teasers. There are alternate spreads. 
So if they score and you tease Green Bay or you bet them on an alternate point spread, they still did not have to convert the two-point conversion for you to win your bet. They could have lost 28-26 or whatever it would have been. It doesn't matter. And you still would have won on those two scenarios. Now for people who bet money line or against the spread, your only hope was to convert the two-point conversion, perhaps get to overtime and win by six. Or for some people who got that push at three, they would have been satisfied. Nope. We don't have any testicular fortitude. We kick a field goal and we don't realize Tom Brady's on the other side of the field. Game, set, match. Tampa Bay is heading to Tampa Bay for the Super Bowl. Right. So just to be clear, all those things you said, they didn't happen, right? And all those people betting against Tom Brady, again, 20 years into this, still betting against Tom Brady, still losing, right? They all lost. And I'm one of them. (laughs) But we will make a comeback as most gamblers would say. I just wanted to make that clear. Now, moving on, did anything stand out to you with, the, with Buffalo against the Chiefs? No, I, I don't think there were too many storylines that blew my mind in this Buffalo-Kansas City game. I, I think most people would have the presence of mind to feel like Kansas City would not only win that game, but cover the three or three and a half, depending on where you shopped for your point spread. Listen, the Buffalo Bills scored the first nine points of that game and the last nine points of that game and still got blown out. Josh Allen really didn't take too many uh, long shots down the field, a little surprising there, but the single man coverage was incredible by Kansas City. Josh Allen had a few great runs, but probably not enough. They kept him in the pocket. The Kansas City defense was off the charts, probably their best performance all year. Pat Mahomes is just so frustrating to watch. If you're betting against him or you are a Bills fan, you watch that guy drop back 12 feet. How is he going to make how is he going to make this conversion? Well, he figures it out nearly every single time. The Bills were on ice skates, watching Tyreek Hill go around the field like it's flag football against professional athletes was mind-boggling. And of course, the Bills are just not great against the tight end. And now you're facing Travis Kelsey. It was a recipe for disaster. It was a terrible matchup for Buffalo heading into the AFC championship game. Really, nothing stood out. Kansas City is the better team. They are going to give Tampa Bay a lot of problems, as we saw a few weeks ago in week 12. Yeah. Now, speaking of Kansas City, they haven't covered very often this season. So what was different about Sunday? Well, I think if you look at Kansas City's numbers over the last eight games, they were long. And what I mean by long is a touchdown or more favorite. In this situation, you look back and you ask yourself, oh, my gosh, I only had to lay three or three and a half or minus 165 on a money line, and I didn't take Kansas City? Well, shame on you, because this is the smallest number that you have received as a better on Kansas City since probably Halloween. So we're in the same spot in the Super Bowl. And of course, we'll talk about that potentially later. But the difference was a short number. Kansas City had no problem covering that. Right, right. So now speaking of the Super Bowl, going into the Super Bowl, can people actually risk betting against Tom Brady? Obviously, we know how I feel about it. But how do you feel about it, Razor? Well, I think you can. I mean, we saw what happened. Hey, I'm even wearing Philadelphia Eagles colors there. I I guess I'm very anti-Tom Brady today. Yeah, I think you can. I mean, Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. I don't think anyone could debate that. But he is in a tough position here. He's going to have to match points with the most exciting electric offense that we have all seen over the last three years. So am I telling you to go ahead and bet your life savings on Kansas City? No, bet responsibly. But yes, I think Kansas City is a favorite for a good reason. They are the better team. They dominated Tampa Bay despite only winning by a field goal. That's an uh, untelling script there. They were winning that game by 17, and Tampa scored the last 14 points of that game with 12. Right. So now moving along this week, sadly, there's no football. No football. So let's talk some college hoops. What do you got? Well, you know, it's very difficult to handicap any game without a number, but I did my research and I'm a money line parlay type of better. I don't typically bet with a spread or a total. So there are two matchups that I absolutely love. We have a unique situation towards the middle to end of the season where the Big 12 will be competing against the SEC. 
Typically, typically that happens earlier in the season, but with COVID, life has changed. I like West Virginia defeating Florida and Morgantown. I feel like West Virginia will have too many big men, and Florida just doesn't have that answer to stop a guy like Culver. Culver. And it's the same situation with UVA versus Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech shorthanded, UVA playing better basketball than anyone in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Jay Huff, the center for UVA, too big, too strong for anybody that's on that Virginia Tech roster. Let's go ahead and money line parlay the two Virginia states. That's right. West Virginia, take me home, country road. State for lovers, the University of Virginia, the defending national champions. People tend to forget that. The last national championship belongs in Charlottesville in 2019. I'm going UVA, West Virginia, pair them up together. Let's get maybe minus 250 on that money line. That's going to pay you out $100 on that victory. Now, why are you a money line parlay guy? What's the benefit to that? Well, I don't, I think for me as a money line parlay guy, I'm a big believer that it's very difficult to bet against the spread. I think we all know that that's where Vegas makes their money when both sides come together and bet plus three or minus three. I feel like we have a competitive advantage by taking the better teams to win outright. Now, the situation with a money line parlay or just a money line straight up, everybody, is this. These are high risk, low reward bets, right? People don't like to hear low rewards, but the percentages come in vastly higher. This is a trend that started in Vegas about five or six years ago where we started to see sharp people taking these money line parlays because they hit Cali, I would say at about a 75 to 80% rate. But be wow. careful, be careful, because if you start going 50%, that's when you start losing money. So you really have to look for quality over quantity. Don't bet money line teams or money line parlays in quantity. We don't need to bet five or six of them on Saturday on the college hoop slate. Let's look for two or three, and I'm almost certain you're going to hit two out of three or three out of three. So that would be your go-to advice for somebody betting to like almost always do money line parlay, nothing else? That is the way I wager. And I always say to people, do your own thing. I have found success in money line parlays, probably more than I have found success as a better in ATS or totals. So yes, go for it. Give it. If you've never given it a shot, look for money line teams that are probably minus 300 or higher, pair them up together, and hopefully you capture a W. All right. There you go, guys. Straight from the razor's mouth. So, okay, moving along um, the following week, let's talk Super Bowl preview. What do you think is going to happen? Whew, big question there. Our Super Bowl is coming up. The game is in Tampa. Is Tampa the home team? Who knows how many fans are going to be there? We have COVID protocols. We have some key injuries to look at. That Tampa Bay secondary banged up prior to the Green Bay game. And then, of course, losing a player, Whitehead, during the game. I think they're all going to play. Le'Veon Bell is back for the Kansas City backfield. Antonio Brown is back for the wide receiver court for Tampa Bay. My lean right now, my lean right now is Kansas City money line. Again, we talk about the fact that you can get Kansas City at minus 170, minus 165 is almost a miracle. We haven't seen that most of the year. We saw it last weekend. Hopefully our viewers and our listeners took advantage of that, took the Chiefs over the Bills. I think this is going to be a low scoring game. I don't want to endorse that quite yet. I still would like to see the injury report. Let me look at COVID protocol. Anything can happen between now and next Sunday with COVID. So take a look at that. But right now, the look ahead, KC on the money line to win this game straight up. Yeah, speaking of COVID protocols, I've been asking since the beginning of the season, what happens if one of the quarterbacks for the Super Bowl gets COVID, right? Like, do they move it? And I've never got an answer. Nobody's ever addressed it. And I feel like it's because it depends who gets it. Who right? gets it? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it would it would be decimating to the NFL to lose Pat Mahomes or Tom Brady. So, what would they do? Is a great question. I don't know what you can do if one of them has COVID. Can you put in the likes of uh, Chad Henney in there on the marquee? And can you imagine betting Kansas City right now on the money line and Pat Mahomes goes down with COVID next week? And what do you do? Well, you hedge out and you bet Tampa Bay. But it's it would be a devastating situation to lose one of those key guys. Yeah. And, I mean, 
you wouldn't feel terrible about Chad Henney, right? Like he showed up, he kept the W secure, like he did his job as far as I'm concerned. I think it's a different situation if he starts, but um, yeah. just kind of interesting to talk about, right? So it's very hopefully, hopefully nobody gets COVID because it just ruins everything. That would destroy the opportunity to see Mahomes and Brady perhaps for the final time ever. We can't let that happen. Stay home, Mahomes. Stay home, Brady. Don't get out of your hotel room. No parties, no clubs, but at least Tom, Tom, Tom Brady will be home. Tom Brady will be home. That's yeah. right. He's not going anywhere. All right, so what you guys are all here for, moving on to the Dr. Locks and the Oracle competition update. So it's a rough start for both competitors. Dr. Locks is down about 15 grand and the Oracle is down about eight grand. So the Oracle is currently leading by about 7,000, but the Oracle went all in on Green Bay in the NFC Championship game, placing four bets for a total loss of 7,000 alone on that game. That's not good in case you're wondering. Dr. Locks has been getting killed by the NBA as of late, going on a five game losing streak, costing him five grand alone in those bets. Both competitors may be off to cold starts, but I have faith that they're gonna turn it around. And you're gonna wanna stay tuned next week as we are anticipating an appearance from Locks and Oracle right here on this show. You don't wanna miss it. All right, Razor, we've got a huge show coming up next week. Super Bowl preview. What can we expect to hear from you? Callie, all week long, I am going to be doing my homework. So many prop bets to choose from. Heads or tails, the national anthem. Is it going to be long? Is it going to be short on the over-under? COVID-19, the weather. It's Super Bowl Sunday, the greatest day in sports, in my opinion. I'm going to research for you. I'm going to research for everybody watching. I cannot wait to see you on the next show. All right. I love it. Sounds great. I'm Callie. He's Razor. Cheers to the beer life, and we'll see you guys next week.